a border checkpoint in County Fermanagh, manned for the past two years by soldiers from the Duke of Edinburgh's Royal Regiment. Can you uh, just open your boot up for me, sir, please? Their tour of duties all but over. Next year, most will be in Hong Kong. But tonight, the bleak routine continues. Every vehicle is logged, every face checked. Stop, search, and hopefully survive. Right, thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. So far, so good. Although several men on the tour have been injured, no one in the battalion's been killed. But all are aware. A careless moment can cost a life. Vigilance mustn't give way to complacency. Okay, pick up the weapon and turn to the right. Sometimes you get very spooky, sometimes at night, especially when you've got a cat running down the alleyway, and it frightens the life out of you sometimes. Or you've got mice in, in, inside here, and then it frightens you then. You hear them gnawing away, and then you start kicking away at the floorboards like it frightens you sometimes. Private Colin Anglis from Swindon in Wiltshire. He knows it's unlikely a terrorist will risk crossing at a permanent checkpoint when there are so many other border routes to choose from. But it has been known, and that knowledge could make solitude uncomfortable. If I don't hear from him for a week, then I do worry. Or if something comes on the news, then you do worry. Eighty or so miles separate Colin from his wife and three children in Antrim. The couple met at a disco in Germany. Separation can strain the relationship. Colin plans to leave the army in two years' time. He'll try to find work in Gabrielle's native Hanover. This Christmas, the home's bare, the couple apart. Army life and family life aren't always compatible. It's very hard. As in the middle one, she's kicked, she misses him all the time, so she's really bad. She gets upset all the time because they don't understand. I mean, you can't say, oh, he's back in five weeks. I mean, they don't understand. Do the two old ones know what Colin is doing? No. She doesn't look, no, not at all. What do they think he'd done? Being assaulted, that's all. Guys, to your duties! Fall! Up! Of the five companies in the battalion, four are at the barracks in Aldergrove near Belfast. Collins Company, C Company, is controlled from an operational base at St Angelo in County Fermanagh. Little luxury here. An airstrip, a few mortarproof huts. They call it Camp Tenko. While some of the men weren't born when the latest troubles began, the company sergeant major is a veteran of six tours. Dennis Mahoney, who's lived in Reading and Devizes, is a Catholic with relatives in Southern Ireland. Tonight, he debriefs a patrol from the Ulster Defence Regiment. You, you put that down on yeah, the floor. Well, right, into OK, thanks, lads. Thanks very much. Cheers. Meanwhile, other men prepare for another nighttime operation. About half the company is always on the move. The rest help the Royal Ulster Constabulary at checkpoints and police stations. One thing the terrorist has done, he succeeded in ruining the most beautiful country in the world. The biggest worry, I think, is not knowing what they're going to hit you with. Bombs in culverts, booby traps, mortaring, shoots, actually shoots onto a patrol or a, or a, a base, uh, anything like that. Dennis and his wife Annette have two children. She works at Aldergrove in the tailor's shop. I don't really worry about it anymore. Um... I don't know. We listen to the news and everything, but you can't really do well on it. If we go into Belfast and we see a lot of activity or something, it tends to bring it home to you then. But otherwise, you tend to forget there's any trouble over here at all. Annette and I have grown up with it kind of thing, you know. Um, I'd done one tour before we were married. Um, the, a month after we were married, I was back on another tour. So we've got, you know, as I'm going through our marriage, uh, you know, so's Northern Ireland. I mean, it's always been there, so we're quite used to it. To some locals, permanent checkpoints are an annoyance. To others, a reassurance. To Private Laurie Jones from Wokingham in Berkshire, it's just another night's work. He's looking forward to joining his mates in the warmth. Some of them have been enjoying gifts from passing motorists. Chocolates, biscuits, cake, uh, flea collar for the dog. <laughs> uh, and where did this character come from? Well, it was, it was found, actually. Um, 
we were out on patrol and uh, one of the patrols found her. She, she was in a bad way when we got her, but uh, she put it up a bit now. Unlike everyone else in Company C, Snowy the Stray at least looks set to enjoy a family Christmas. And in his next report on Wednesday, James Trollope joins a patrol in a Republican village and Christmas dinner back at the barracks. Anyway, I hate all this scrounging. It's very humiliating. Beggars can't be choosers. That may be, but it could cause more problems than it solves. How do you mean? Well, that's right to all these people. We'll have to invite them to the reception, won't we? At this rate, we won't find a hole big enough. Well, we ought to have the reception here anyway. There ain't enough room, Mum. At last count, we've written to at least 70 people. They'll be queuing up down Bridge Street. Mm. It's the ceremony I'm worried about. What? Well, our side of the church is going to be full, but I've never heard Lofty mention any of his family. No. That's true. Yeah, it's going to be empty. Except for Ethel and Willie, I suppose. What did you have to suggest a vote for? Well, it seemed like the fairest way, democratic. Yeah, well, it's not going to make much difference because I'm not going to collect enough votes to get in anyway. No, we all like you, Tessa. I've just got to get the sound right, that's all. Mm, yeah, well, Sharon doesn't want me in the group. She can't stand the competition. You said that yourself, Kelvin. And Harry, God, he's getting so soppy over her. He'll do anything she tells him. Well, for what it's worth, I'll vote for you. Oh, great. And Wix is going to vote for his mate, isn't he? So it doesn't matter what you do, and I reckon that suits you fine. Hey, Look, you can still be loyal to me without causing any aggro with the others. Well, hang on a minute, Tessa. Oh, forget it. Oh, well, that's good for you, mate. Nothing but trouble. Do you think I should go after her? Well, that's what she's expecting, isn't it? We tears on the shoulder next thing. Let's see Bernardo handle. Oh, well, you're a right little cynic, aren't you, Wixie? No, I'm just a realist, Kelvin. I've got to go to work. I'll see you later, mate. Oh. Yes. Give us a cup of tea, please, Sue. It's a county of tourism and of terrorism. Overall, 2,626 lives have been lost since 1969. 557 of them soldiers in the British Army. It'll take years for the shock of Enniskillen to ebb away. 11 killed, more than 60 injured. An IRA bomb on Remembrance Day in Fermanagh's county town. Officers from the Duke of Edinburgh's Royal Regiment a few hundred metres from the blast. Oscar Wilde and Samuel Beckett are two of Enniskillen's famous sons. Today, officers in the Royal Ulster Constabulary have more on their minds than the town's literary heritage. Roads can be dangerous. The threat, what the army term improvised explosive devices, safer by air. Away from base, soldiers never go out alone in uniform. Major John Wart, commander of C Company. He was 11 when the latest troubles began. Now 29, he's more than 10 years older than his youngest men. Some of them who've only just had their 18th birthday, so are now allowed on the streets, um, have got great responsibility. They've, they've got uh, live ammunition on them. They've got the responsibility of knowing they're terrorists out there. Um, they work incredibly hard, incredibly long. So on the whole, he, he gets on with his job, does a bloody good job, and uh, works incredibly hard. The border town of Canorley, where Republican tendencies are known to be strong. The RUC station here has been one of the most besieged in the province. Earlier in the year, it was razed to the ground by a mortar attack. This Christmas, a section from Company C will be stationed here. The village is dominated by the Catholic Church. Hereabouts, most depend on the land for their living. A tractor was used to launch the mortar that destroyed the RUC station. Miraculously, no one was killed. The section from C Company checks vehicles on minor roads. Not everyone dislikes serving in Northern Ireland. The money's much better over here. It's the closest they'll get to soldiering without going to war. Their feelings towards the IRA are unambiguous. Well, after on the skill in there, it's a bunch of animals, isn't they? After that. Private David Stemp, age 20, from Reading, Berkshire. Well, you've always got to be very alert, and obviously more so now because it's near the end of the tour. Can't go around with the attitude, it's never going to happen to me because then you're going to cop it. They watch us 
they plan for us and um, obviously if patterns are set, they can get us. Corporal Jim Parsons, 25, from Gosport, Hampshire. We've got a job to do over here, but also you've got to do it very carefully, otherwise, as statistics show over the last 10, 15 years, that you can get hit. When you sign on a dotted line, you know that you're going to have Christmases away, etc. Except they don't show you this in the brochures, you know. They show the sunny person sat on the beach in the Bahamas. Corporal Nigel White, 25, from Devizes, Wiltshire. If you get too pissed off, then you tend to switch off, which out here, obviously, you can't do. You know, as soon as you start switching off, dropping your guard, that's it. Corporal White decides to take his section cross-country back to the station. It's exposed, it's wet, it could be risky. the safety of the barracks at Aldergrove, 80 miles away, a cheerful band of officers prepares to serve Christmas lunch to 500 or so men. It's undercover, it's warm, it could be fun. Those times, and you wish you were just back home. I don't know, it's not too bad. Private Jamie McCann, 22, from Caversham, Berkshire. You know, I miss me bird a lot. You know, for obvious reasons, I think. Don't think I'll get married while I'm in the army. I've only got 18 months to do, so it's been a good crack. God bless you. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> What I've always said Northern Ireland to myself is like a 100 metre relay race, and except it takes two years to turn the baton on. And I've just got around that stage now and I'm just about to hand it on. So we're staying extra fast, extra vigilant. And very shortly it'll be, there you go, son, do your leg. And that'll be it. Back to the showers. My race is finished. Farmers boys. The colours of the Duke of Edinburgh's Royal Regiment were brought ashore today in a short welcoming ceremony at HMS Tamer. Bearing a Chinese dragon emblem, the battalion's arrival comes appropriately on the eve of the start of the lunar year of the dragon. The last time the regiment was in the territory was 145 years ago during the Opium War, which resulted in Hong Kong becoming a British colony. It returned today for probably the last time before 1997 when the territory reverts to Chinese sovereignty. The regiment's commander was asked whether the battalion would be the last station in the territory as the British garrison prepares to pull out in the run-up to 1997. Well, we may be asked to stay a bit longer, but of course another regiment may replace us. Uh, but really, I mean, that's not for, that's nothing to do with me. I, I have to just do as I'm told from the headquarters. But we know we'll be here as a battalion until, as I say, the end of March 1990. The 650-strong force has just ended a two-year tour of Northern Ireland and will take over from the Coldstream Guard. 